Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved on God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 5 For every high priest taken from among men, so among the Israelites, among the Levites, every high priest is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. They, they got the best of the offerings. The tithes went to them. That he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Now this was to relieve the guilt of sin. The sacrifice, the sacrifice was they were prescribed uh, things for them to do for their sins. And they were going to offer free will offerings if they, they would like to do it for God. So he would take what, need, what they gave for the people, whether by... What the laws pres prescribe or what they wanted to give also. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way. For that he himself also is com compassed with infirmity. Now this is to relieve confusion. The ignorant. That was somebody who sinned in ignorance. There was no offering for a sin that, hey, I'm going to do it, and I'll go to the priest, and he'll tell me, for, say, four Hail Marys, and, and this and all that, and I'll get off. There was none of that. Your sin in the Old Testament had to be, you did not do it purposely. That's a lot from today. And then the hour of the way, they, they've strayed the path that God has, has sent them to do. They walked off. They left God. So then there would be there would be uh, sacrifices. There would be offering, and he too could understand the situation because he was a sinner. So you can't go to the high priest to be. Resolved of sin when he himself is a sinner. How is a sinner going to wash another sinner? So we read today that Samuel, when he was called up by Saul, he's like, tomorrow you're going to be with me. What's that mean? We're in one big area in the center of the earth. You're going to hell on the other side. I'm over here in Abraham's bosom. Saul disobeyed God. And God says, I'm done with you. That's it. You're done. You're going to hell. Samuel did right. He went to Abraham's bosom. Did not go to heaven. He went to arrest. But the high priest cannot get you to heaven. It couldn't get Samuel as a high priest. They couldn't get him. He had to offer sacrifices for his own sins. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sin. He is just as much as a sinner as the people were. That day of atonement, that national atonement, he will go into that veil into before the mercy seat. He had to do that twice that day. 
one for his own sins and one for the sins of the people now if he went in there first just for his just for the sins of the people he'd be dead he wouldn't come out he had to go in there twice because he's a sinner and no man taketh this honor unto himself but he that is called of God as was Aaron there was a special line special family for that high priest he was the son of Aaron and Aaron was a son of Adam a sinner you couldn't choose just any man you wanted to be the high priest people chose Saul God chose David but you could not choose the high priest so you can't choose your high priest that sitteth in the heavens today for your soul you can't say oh I'll say Mary does it that's not correct he has to be the high priest that's been chosen of God. And he can't be a sinner as the high priest were. Now remember, we're right into Hebrews. Hebrews know what the high priest was. They know what the office of the high priest is. We're trying to show them from the Old Testament. We're trying to bring them into the New Testament of Jesus Christ why this is all here and remember there is no New Testament 64 AD I forget which is the early book the writer of Hebrews is trying to show the Hebrews the prophecy the scriptures concerning God Jesus Christ and the law is done we have a New Testament so also, all right, so also, we just talked about one, two, three, four. Talked about the, pri the high priest. So also Christ. So there we go. The high priest is Christ. So also Christ glorified not himself to make a high priest. He didn't boast of that office. He didn't, hey, look at me. He did not wear an ID pad, high priest. He didn't make himself a show. Matter of fact, do you realize, you know how much Jesus made himself a show? Have you read the gospel that we study? Go back and study it. He'd be, he'd be somewhere to be like, who's that? Somebody had to tell other people, that's Jesus coming. Jesus did not come in with IDs. He did not come in with, with his own trumpeting. He did not come in with his own mouth. Other people would say, that's Jesus. He's here. But he that said unto him, thou art my son. Well, guess who said that? Who is the, who is the one that can say, Jesus, you're my son? God. Thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee. The only begotten son of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's said in Psalms 2 7. David wrote Psalms 2 7. David is a prophet. You know, David was a king. Yeah, we all know that. But, gentlemen, gentlemen, you know what Psalms says? You, you do have a copy of Psalms, right? Hebrews? Yes, we do. David wrote that, right? David was speaking about Jesus Christ. See the Old Testament? Now, if you happen to have a Bible, which is good, you know, some. I got the scroll field. It mentions, it lists uh, references. Many, you know, you got to be careful of the notes, but the references are great when it's, this is taken out of the Old Testament, and they tell you the place. And go back and mark your Bible. If you mark your Bible, that place there, that's talking about Jesus Christ. So the writer of Hebrews goes back to the Old Testament and quotes the Old Testament. So again, if you're going to witness the Jews, may God grace and bless you and mercy 
and wonder that you can go back and know that Old Testament so well that you can bring that Old Testament unto the Messiah, Jesus Christ, for that Jew. God bless you if you can do that. You say, can you do it? I have not dealt with a Jew. Well, I've dealt with a Jew and I've used the era of using the New Testament. Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place. And this is going to be Psalms 110. Thou art a priest. Jews know priests, don't they? Forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, you think the Jews are going to know that, gentlemen? Do you know about Melchizedek? <laughs> this is the guy that shows up with... Now, what can you bring Melchizedek into Jesus Christ? All right, He shows up to Abraham, and he just happens to have bread and wine. We're going to speak more about Melchizedek later on in the book of Hebrews. But again, speaking of Hebrews, Melchizedek, what's, guess what that's going to do to him? That's going to boing, 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 that's in the book of Moses. Right? See how often we've gone into the law with Moses, Genesis? Now we've rung the bell of Abraham and Melchizedek. And Abraham gave him tithes. And the Bible says he's, he is the, uh, the priest of the Most High God. Well, guess who steals that title? I don't need to tell you that. They're liars. All right, so Melchizedek. This is another one of Jews that they know. Five chapters, and how much of the Old Testament have we already seen? Well-known names. Who, in his days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers, okay, and supplication with strong cries and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard, in that he feared though he were a son uh oh you thought verse 7 was about Melchizedek did you if you did it that's an error he says thou Jesus Christ the son are a priest forever after the order that was set by Melchizedek who Jesus in the days of his flesh so Jesus Christ had flesh. He had a body. When he offered up prayers, and he prayed often. But Matthew 26, 39, and 44 are certain prayers that he offered up. And supplications with strong crying. You remember somewhere in the Bible speaking about Jesus praying in tears with God the Father? And tears. Unto him, God, that was able to save him from death. Father, can you let this cup pass from me? And was heard in that he feared. There was fear in Jesus that night. That moment, he didn't fear death. He, those, that moment that the holy righteous God, Jesus Christ, was now going to take that cup of every single sin ever to be. And he was going to drink that wrath of God. You don't think you should fear the wrath of God when it comes to hell and your sins? Jesus Christ had fear about it. And he said, Father, can this cup pass? And friend, if you're going to tote in your sins and you're going to mock your sin, you're going to stand before the holy God, Jesus Christ, and you're going to have to give an account. And the Bible says he sweat as it were blood, drops of blood. Now don't get the impression he feared death. No, I ain't. That's sin. Why? Any man could die. Let's say Jesus Christ was a carpenter all his life. But let's, let's say that for a moment. He would have died. Let's say he became 
born in Herod's house and became king, he would die. So, there are many people out there who, who go to bed and they don't wake up anymore. Nothing to fear, is it? Especially if you're saved. But let's look at what the contents of the scripture is. Let's go back to verse 1. For every high priest taketh from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for what? What's that word? It's sin. Verse 3. For by reason he ought as for the people, so also for himself to offer for what? What's that word? Sin. So we run to verse 7, who in his days by flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications for strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared, what was all that about? The sins of the people. Father in heaven, I am about to become abominable. How's that word? Have you read the sins in the Old Testament that God said there is no more sacrifice, adultery, murder, blasphemy the name? Imagine Jesus Christ taking a sin for blasphemy his own name. For everyone that uses the name Jesus Christ as a cuss, Jesus took that sin and nailed it to the cross. That moment that the father would turn his back on his son and the world would become darkness. As he cries out, Father, why have you forsaken me? That is what I fear. And when he comes far as it is finished, and then he dies. Though he were a son, capital S, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. You ever have, I don't know if you ever had, but I have. You ever have anybody tell you that they ought not to obey God? However they say it. I'm not going to fear God. I'm not going to do nothing God said. I'm going to do, I'm going to do something else besides Jesus. That, that's not obeying God. Okay? When you come to me with your religion or you're an atheist, whatever you say, and you got, you are disobeying God. Okay? So Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment is going to sit in that judgment and he's going to judge people who disobeyed God. How can he do that? Because the Bible says he learned obedience to the Father. When he prayed in that, that garden, he says, Father, may this cup pass. Nevertheless, I will. you got to do it. Father, only this cup may pass. They're sleeping over there. They don't. Nevertheless, thy will. You know what that nevertheless thy will? He obeyed the Father. Answer him. Okay, Father. Nevertheless, thy will. Then the third time he gets up, wakes him up, and says, let's get going. I got to go. The one that, the one that betrayed me is at hand. Here we go. And that sets forth. Our payment for sins on Calvary. And Jesus already said, he says, listen, can't I send 12 legions of angels? And he didn't. It's not the death. It's that wicked sin that he had to take. Now, let me ask you a question. Before, the night before, from the garden to the resurrection, all right, we take that out for a moment. Go from the birth of Jesus to the, that night he's in the garden. When was Jesus ever whipped? When was he ever beaten? When did he ever get spitted upon? When did he ever have his beard pulled? When did they ever nail him to anything? They didn't. That all happened the moment he says, I'm going to take their sins, Father, according to your will. And that's when it began. It began before the cross. It began when he's standing before the Sanhedrin. They, they put a shroud over him. Come on, Jesus, tell us who did it. Pooh. Come on. Tell us who did that one. Come on, you're God. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> Come on, God. Tell me who did it. 
and he's standing before the, the soldiers of, of Pilate, and these are no wimpy, gooky kind of American soldiers. These are the Roman elite soldiers, and taking that crown of thorns, and it says they put it on his head, and they bashed it on his head with the leaf. You couldn't touch that. You could not put those crowns upon their head without doing your own hands in justice. And punching him and pulling his beard. That began when he said, Father, I will do your will. That's what Jesus didn't want. That's what scared him. It ought to scare you when you're in your sin. Especially if you won't repent and get right before God. You walk off in a devil's hell for all eternity. The fear of the Lord is the wisdom, the Bible says in Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is, is understanding. The fear of the Lord. God will cast your wicked soul into hell for not repenting of Jesus Christ. You ought to fear that. Though he were his son, yet he learned obedience. So that one that learned obedience of God the Father will judge those who will not obey God. How's that? And then that son that prays for, for you, that's seated at the right hand of the Father, and we try to do right, and, and we sin, and we do wrong, but we try to do right. He's like, Father, you know, I know exactly how they feel. They're trying. They're really trying, Father. Yes, yeah, Satan may be right. He may be right about that sin he just named. It'll be under the blood. It should be under the blood. It's already under the blood. Lord, they're trying to do right. He didn't talk about Christians who really love the Lord and do right. By the things which he suffered. You know that first time they put that shawl over and he punched him in the face? Jesus goes, with, Michael, bring him down here now. I'll tell you who it was. Shut up the great white throne judge. I'll tell you who hit me. Now, I'll tell you. No. Oh, my beard. Bring one angel down. One angel. You know what one angel did to an army in the Old Testament? Bring one angel down and destroy this whole place. No, he didn't. Father, I'm going to that cross. I'm going to go for their sins because I love them. And he learned. By all those suffering. You know what we're supposed to learn when we suffer? We're supposed to learn something. And being made perfect. Now I believe that is 100% perfect. For us it means we try to do the best that God wants us to do. And we do come up short. But Jesus Christ perfect. Being become the author of eternal salvation. Unto all them that obey him. Okay. Now let's look. Let's look for a minute. Let's, let's, let's go back to Hebrew. They all read what we read today in 2 Samuel, the witch of Endor. When Samuel said, you disquieted me, you woke me up, darn you. <laughs> I was sleeping. And today, excuse me, tomorrow, you're going to be with me. They knew King Saul was a wicked sinner, and he knew they would get the wrath of God. They know that Samuel is sleeping in a place where there's also hell. They knew that. And yet, I know today by the high priest set forth by God the Son, Jesus Christ. I know when I am to die. I'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. No, no high priest could give that promise but Jesus Christ. So the writer of Hebrews, whether it be Paul, whoever it is, is now telling the Hebrews, you know what? When you die, you don't go to Abraham's bosom. Remember, Jesus mentioned that in the book of Luke. That got around Abraham's bosom. They've never heard that before. I'll tell you something that's better than Abraham's bosom. It's something better than the high priest that you guys know about. It is the great high priest, Jesus Christ. And when you die by believing in him, chapter 3, you get eternal salvation. Unto all them that obey him 
And go back to chapter 3, verse 19, and then read to begin chapter chapter 4 about those that don't believe and those that do believe. Another thing. Let's look at the let's look at the Hebrews here again. Where did it say the Old Testament to believe on the high priest and they should be saved? Nowhere. And we're going to read later on in Hebrews, Lord willing, if the rapture don't happen or I don't die, or how much Satan has tried to stop this family from getting this Bible read through. Amazing all the things that Satan's come up to. He's going to say that the, the sacrifice of bulls and goats ain't going to do it. This one says, I'm, I'm going to modify the salvation. It's to believe and obey him. Who? The high priest set by God. Oh, not of Aaron's seed. Of Jesus Christ, born of the virgin of the family of David, Judah. You believe on him, you're going to get a salvation that no other Old Testament saint ever got. Until the Lord died and buried, and that they rose from the grave, and, the sea, and, and came on the empty tomb. I have got a better hope in my death than David, Samuel, Solomon. You know, Solomon has has a sure mercy, like like of David. God said, "Listen, that, if that man sinned, and he sinned, he's in heaven." Man, he, he multiplied wives. He even he sacrificed and did service to other gods. He told David, says, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chastise him, but he's mine. He is my son. But I got a more eternal hope than they do. Rest upon Jesus Christ, the high priest. And when I die, absent from the body and present with Jehovah. called of God God called Jesus Christ for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son notice how that matches this verse chapter after the order of Melchizedek now what did Melchizedek do he came with bread and wine matched that with the twelve in the upper room for the last supper woo -wee. Of, with, of whom, Jesus, we have many things to say. Of Melchizedek, we have many things to say. And hard to be uttered. <laughs> it's going to be hard to speak about. Why? Seeing ye are dull of hearing. Oh. I wonder if my family feels that way. When we preach to lost people Saturday mornings. When they hear the gospel of the great things that Jesus has done to them in their life. And no one will step forward. The Hebrews are dull of hearing. He says, Hebrews, ye. I'm going to stop here because you're not going to listen. You know, that is also another trait of the Hebrews in the Old Testament. They didn't listen to Jeremiah. They didn't listen to Ezekiel. They didn't listen to uh, 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 Jeremiah. They didn't, uh, uh, Ezekiel, I mean, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. They didn't listen to any of the prophets, did they? Jeremiah had... Half a convert, kind of, maybe. <laughs> Ezekiel had nobody. And even when they were carried to Babylon, according to what Jeremiah preached, they still didn't listen. Daniel had only how many people working with him as Jewish people of all the nation? Three? How many people stood up of the Jews when Nebuchadnezzar says, okay, turn the jukebox in, put the quarter in, and start your boogie-woogie for my God. How many stood up with him? Three? That's it? You know what God says about those Jews? They're stubborn and stiff-necked people. This is who we're talking about. For when 
for the time ye ought to be teachers, rabbis. Teachers, let's get now. Here we go. This is what I've all been saying. Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You guys are teaching the Old Testament. You're teaching the, the, the Torah and the Testament. No, no, no. Sit down in your classroom and let someone else teach you. When you go back through the, through the book of Moses, you do what I've been doing in the book of Hebrews. This is what you're going to do. Show them Jesus Christ. Not the coming Messiah. He's already come. You've already rejected him. You need to go be back and be taught. Your rabbis know nothing anymore. Only those that have believed on Jesus Christ, then they can teach you. Do you know 13 teachers who will go back and teach Israel? I do. Paul, Peter, James, John. Now they become the schoolmaster. And they will use the law to show them their sins and show them Jesus and what to do with their sins. Remember, this is 64 AD. Six more years that temple is going to be gone. Can you just see what that veil looks like in a holy place right now? All patched up. You think God would allow that? But the people don't know that. And are become such as have need of milk. Now milk. That's the source for infants. We'll see in the context when we close this verse. Or verses. And not of strong meat. You don't, when a baby is born. You don't flop down a piece of ribeye steak. And here you go son. Enjoy it. You're going to gum it. You can't do nothing with it. It ain't good. Hebrews. You know, what, you know what the writer of Hebrews said? This is strong me. You ain't ready. We've got to get you the principles of the virgin birth of Jesus. We've got to get you the principles that you got to be saved by the blood of Jesus. you got to realize the law can't do nothing. With All the law can do is show you are a sinner. That is milk. That is formula. You ain't ready for the rapture. You ain't ready for Jacob's trouble. You're not ready for all that strong meat in the Bible. What you're ready for is to know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father Jehovah except by me, Jesus. You got to get that down before we feed you anything else. So, you don't go hand newborn babes in the Lord. You don't go hand lost people, oh here's a video on, on the beast and the mark of the beast and 666. They ain't ready. You're doing wrong. No mother would give her child from, from birth to suckling to being weaned. She would not give her child anything such as steak. Or hamburger and even certain age like that hot dogs and, and pe stuff like that can cause a choking hazard you don't want to choke the convert of Jesus Christ you don't want to give listen that child who's off the breast you can give him a Philly Mon steak and he will die with that steak in front of him unable to eat it die why because you didn't give him the right food For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Peter says the new, as a newborn babe in Christ, the new milk. And if you stay on milk your entire life, if a 20-year-old is still in the church drinking milk, he is unskilled. He's still a baby. That's a retard. That's being retarded from growth. And I'm not going against anybody who, who is retarded. 
there are people who are retarded because they can't come out of that their own. It's a physical defect. But there are Christians who are retarded because they don't want to grow. But strong me belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use, the word of God, verse 13, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil, that you can by the Bible know what God expects what is good and what God expects is bad. And you can live your life. Man, he, 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 he's now put the Jews to shame. You're not listening. You're a bunch of babies. Anybody said that to American church today that they would never come back? Because they're not listening. And when they're not listening, don't throw them a stake. It ain't going to do no good. When I grew up as a Christian, this, these movies about the 666, the mark of the beast, and Revelation, they are throwing those people out. The people who didn't even know who God was. They're throwing out the people who are newborn babes. and they ain't going to do you no good. That child will die with that good food. It's good food, but they're not able to bear it. Verse 14. 